modeling exponential growth. So jumping right into this problem, in 2000, the population of the world was 6.1 billion. So I'm gonna to try to kind of identify the numbers as we go through this and any keywords. And the continuous, big keyword there, pointing us towards the right formula, continuous rate of growth was 1.4% per year. It is claimed that a rate of 1.0% per year would make a significant difference in the total population in just a few decades. So I'll go ahead and identify that key number going on here in this word problem. Um, let's test this claim by estimating the population of the world in the year 2050 using a relative growth rate of first we'll do 1.4% per year and then we'll work 1.0% per year. So as we get going on this, we know the starting amount, okay? Um, we also know it says continuous, that big keyword, which is pointing us towards this formula, A of T, equals P times E raised to the R times T. And it's a growth rate. Um, so um, things are getting bigger. That's gonna be a positive rate as we plug this in. Okay, so we start with 6.1 billion. So that's gonna be our P value, 6.1 billion. And I'm gonna go ahead and put it in both of these. Um, so because P is in billions, our finishing up amount, what we end up with is also gonna be in billions. We don't need to tack on a bunch of zeros and expand this out. All right, on this first one, on part A, we're going 1.4%. So that's two decimal places over 0 0.014. On the second one, we have 1.0%. And it's worth pointing out, this is you know proper rounding. If you rounded to the nearest whole percent, 1.4% would be rounded to 1%. Okay, now our time frame, we went from our starting amount was in the year 2000, we wanna know how many people are gonna be around in the year 2050. So a quick subtraction, 2050 minus 2000 is gonna be 50 years in the future. And we wanna know the accumulated amount or what we end up with. So my formula that's utilizing A. So plug all this stuff in and get it into our calculator. We can say A of 50 equals 6.1 E raised to the 0 0.014 multiplied by 50. And we'll do something very similar over here. We're gonna plug in 50, still 6.1 E raised to the 0 0.01 multiplied by 50 this time. And then putting each one of these into our calculators. On this one, on the left-hand side with 1.4% growth, I got 12.28 and then that'll be in billions, just like our starting amount was. On the right hand side, I got this to be 10.06 billion. So in testing this claim, does it make a significant difference or not? Well, this is an extra around 2 billion plus people. All right, so based on these different percentages, even though we rounded down correctly, you know, if we were trying to round to the nearest whole percent, correct rounding here, but that would, that would um, account for an extra 2 billion people that are gonna be on this earth and we have to feed and we have to you know, take care of basically. So we have to be very precise on our rates. That's the biggest takeaway from this problem is keep a lot of decimal places on your rates or keep an exact rate if you have to solve for one along the way because it can make a very significant difference in not that long relatively of a time frame. This was only 50 years um, from 2000 to 2050. So that rate makes a big difference. Let's answer a follow-up question on this. Population of the world in 2000 was 6.1 billion. So again, keyword or key number that we'll plug in. And the estimated continuous growth rate was 1.4% per year. And again, continuous is pointing us towards the same formula. If the population continues to grow at this rate, when will it reach 122 billion? So one more key number to plug in here. All right, so we started with 6.1 billion. That's gonna go for P. Can continuous growth rate of 1.4% per year. So 0 0.014 goes in for our rate. And uh, the continu uh, population continues to grow at this rate. When will it reach 122 billion? So the population has grown all the way up to 122 billion. That's gonna be what we end up with, P or A. So we don't know what T is. 
So let's plug all of this into the continuously compounded um, interest formula. And we get 122 equals 6.1 e raised to 0 0.014 t. So we don't know t and it's up here in the exponent. So let's do some solving down for t. So you'll notice it's in the exponent, our variable. So that makes this an exponential equation. So what we're gonna do first is isolate the exponential part, whatever is raised to that exponent. So that 6.1 does not have the exponent attached to it. So let's move that to the other side by dividing both sides by 6.1. Thus getting e raised to that power on one side all by itself. And 122 divided by 6.1 is 20. Next, what we wanna do is we've isolated the exponential part. We'd like to kind of get this variable out of the exponent. Noticing that E is our base here, let's apply a natural log to both sides. And you're gonna get used to this through these lessons um, through the rest of this section that whenever we have E as our base and we're gonna have that a lot, we wanna use a natural log on both sides because natural log means log base E, and then we have E to a power. So these are inverse functions. Of one another. And what's going to happen is we're going to get very nice canceling out and we're going to be left with our exponent. So 0.014t is what remains on the right hand side based on the inverse function property of natural log and e to a power. So to finish this up, to get t all by itself, we just need to divide by that decimal 0.014, divide it out in front here. That makes a one. So we get t all by itself. So we have an exact answer. But getting an approximation would probably be pretty handy on this. We can say that T is going to be approximately, what, 213.9. I'm going to round this to 214 to the nearest whole year. So I guess the, to answer their last question here, when will it reach 122 billion? Well, it's going to take 214 years. But our clock started in the year 2000 because that's when our initial amount was given. So 2000 plus 214 years, I guess we can say 2214 is going to be the year to have 122 billion people on this earth, which is a whole lot of people. All right, hope this helps out on setting up um, these mathematical modeling problems with exponential functions. Look for those keywords. I like listing out all my variables off to the side and just kind of filling in each variable as we go. Um, and then figuring out what do I need to find, what's left over that hasn't been solved for yet. All right, hope this helps out. Good luck to you.